I was just thinking too much, to be honest, this whole series, like, how I'm going to approach the game, you know what I'm saying? So The Brooklyn Nets had a really interesting, quite perplexing season. He's, he's lost. And in this video, I aim to cover all the bases with you today, as I don't want you to feel lost like Kyrie Irving. We'll get into that later. Now let's get back to the NBA playoffs and talk about the Brooklyn Nets because they were the betting favorites to win it all. But first, we have to get back to the previous season. The Nets were in the series and they went to game seven. Until they lost to Milwaukee in the second round, in large part due to injuries. To some extent, I can agree here. It's a big case of what if. What if the Nets were healthy, right? They may as well beat the Bucks. We all know that if Kyrie Irving that showstopper, Mr. Box Office, the nastiest handle in the game, one of the most skilled. Max Kellerman says arguably the most skilled plays you ever see. I mean, you could see here the reasons why Stephen A thinks the Nets lost. I mean, the Giannis is in the bottom of this list, and that's why I have to disagree. I think if the big three are healthy, they will lay waste to this league. The role players can mess up, but if the big three no, are healthy. No. The problem I have with people saying this is when Kevin Durant had the chance to win the series, he came up short. Well, Kevin Durant in overtime with 0 for 6, and he airballed the last shot. I can understand people saying, well, Kyrie Irving being healthy in the series, it would have made the difference. I get that. But to write off the box completely and act as though KD is the best ever, I mean. What did Kevin Durant show you? That, that showed me a Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan type performance. Kevin Durant is amazing in that series, and I think... I had, Incredible. I said on Sunday, I think he's in the top 10 all time for me now. I moved him up ahead of Shaq and Moses and Akeem. Some were even saying that he had more talent and he was more gifted than the GOAT himself. He just showed he's the most talented basketball player on earth, uh, if not of all time. You played with Michael Jordan and, and, and I know, KD's. I know, I know. Right I think there. he's more gifted. I really do. Don't get me wrong, though. Steve Kerr is a pretty credible source. He played with Jordan, he coached Kevin Durant. I mean, how could you not disagree? He's saying he's more gifted. And I, I, I agree with that. Uh, you coached Durant at the beginning of his career. You coached against him, obviously, Michael, all those years. Is Durant more gifted? Yes, he is. Initially, my response to this question was nah. And then I thought about it just like uh, VC did and just like Coach PJ. And yeah, it's true, man. And I will say with guys like Joe Harris and Kyrie Irving not being able to play much and not being able to really show up, Kevin Durant did a hell of a job carrying this team. As the ebbs and flows of, of guys being in and out of the lineup, Kevin Durant was asked to carry a, a heavy load in the playoffs, and his body is really ready for it, I think. It is like, who has the title of best player in the league? I think that's what drives him. I think he wants to be the best player in the league. I mean, he probably is the best player in the league. I think he is. Do you agree with Kevin Durant at number one for the first time? Hell yeah, without question. Kevin Durant best player in the world. Giannis outplayed Kevin Durant, won a championship, and yet Kevin Durant is the best in the world. So we have KD, Kyrie, and James Harden in their prime versus you, D Wade, and LeBron in your prime. <laughs> oh boy. The big three of the Miami Heat, oh, they, they, they were lethal and one of the best teams ever. Uh, I really would say that 2014 Heat team was unmatched. Three on three, who wins? Three on three. I'm going to give the nod to them. Um, uh -oh. I know it's Chris Bosh. I know he played with the Heat. He was part of that big free, but it's just so ridiculous looking back that he even said this. Like, what is wrong with this cat? You see what happens is everybody was quick to jump on the bandwagon. Kevin Durant is the best player on the planet on Tuesday because he had a historic performance, and there's no denying that. And credit to Shannon here. He's consistent with this point. KD still lost that series to the Bucks. You're not willing to say right now Kevin Durant is the best player in the world. I think Kevin Durant is the best scorer on this planet, in the world. LeBron, he can, he can just do everything. And so uh, he's not going to give up this crown too easy of being the, the best player in the world. I guess Magic still thinks we're in 2012 where LeBron and KD are fighting it for the MVP. And KD's on another level. He, the torch is almost being to uh, passed from LeBron to him as the best player on the planet. Right now, LeBron James almost is passing the torch to Kevin Durant. Is Magic uh, Zeno? Nah, you know what? I'll get to Scottie Pippen. He's still trying to stay relevant here. When he was asked if 
KD is now better than LeBron. Here's what he had to say. KD can score better than LeBron, probably always has been able to, but has he surpassed LeBron? Not. I think we can all see that KD cares a lot about what people have to say about him. I know he tries to act like he doesn't, but he really does. He tried to beat the Milwaukee Bucks instead of utilizing his team. LeBron James would have figured out how to beat them, and he wouldn't have been exhausted, and he may not have taken the last shot. But LeBron ain't KD, and KD ain't LeBron. KD's a shooter, a scorer, but he doesn't have what LeBron has. As petty as Scotty can be, as stupid as he can be, as bitter as he can be about Jordan, he's right here, right? KD, he's not as complete of a player as LeBron is. But they asked him to do it again, and he didn't. They asked him to do it again, and he couldn't. So you all know, KD's got rabbit ears. But KD, man, he really just can't help himself. He has this childish tendency to just snap at anybody that criticizes him. Didn't the great Scottie Pippen refuse to go in the game for the last second shot because he was in his feelings? His coach drew up the play for a better shooter? Uh, yeah, but what does that have to do with what he said? You guys can see where I'm going with this. It doesn't make what Scotty said false. This guy Scott also wanted to enjoy his summer, so he chose to rehab during the season. Laugh out loud, yo, Scotty Pippen. They followed Phil, not you. Like, where is all this coming from? Why is he so snappy about it? He's so bitter, it seems. It's like he did not need to do that. Stephen A, what do you think of Katie's response? I thought it was unnecessary. I think KD sees that a lot of people, when they see him lose this series against the Bucks, they'll put the blame, they'll put the onus on KD's shortcomings. It's not just that Steve Nash is the coach. It's that you picked him. Yeah. Sean Marks picks the coach you want. But that comes with the territory of having so much control and power over the organization. Spencer Dinwiddie is getting cleared from his partially torn ACL, and he's going to be among the top point guards on the market. All right, the season's over, so we have to talk about potential free agents, uh, people leaving, people going to different teams, you know, the usual stuff. Imi Udoka apparently is going to be a Celtics head coach. Yeah, that's a big loss. He was mainly focused on the Nets defense. And so let's see if that translates to next season's defense being weaker, I guess. But in the meantime, you pick up a guy in Kemp Thomas in the draft. That seems like a big steal. A rookie that we kind of overlooked tonight, who you could see being really awesome. Who would you pick, KOC? Cam Thomas. I don't think we might have overlooked him, but I think teams overlooked him. Yes. Having him fall all the way to the Brooklyn Nets at 27. Okay, so free agency's on the way. The Lakers just acquired Westbrook via trade. The Nets are looking to propel their big free up against the Lakers in a potential finals matchup. Me thinks that ESPN is reaching at straws because they really want to see this matchup happen. Perk, who do you think has the more formidable big three? The Lakers' total squad mm -hmm. as presently constructed would not beat a healthy Brooklyn Nets. Probably not. Oh, yeah. And this was around the time that you had constant, like, weekly reminders that these guys were the most skillful players to ever do it. The Lakers have, of the big three, the Lakers have better raw athletes, mm -hmm. size, strength. The Nets have more skilled offense, uh, more skilled players scoring the ball. At his size, Kyrie Irving scoring the ball, you can argue, is the best who ever did it. Same thing with Harden, same thing with KD. Oh yeah, Harden's still in this team. Okay, so let's, let's check into Harden. He's partying around, you know, doing his usual stuff. Apparently, uh, KD and Kyrie's girlfriends were getting houses paid by the Brooklyn Nets themselves. This was all disclosed by Matt Sullivan, apparently. This guy has been around the Nets for a while, and he's been saying, apparently, there's a blank check as soon as these guys got here. Whether that's buying a girlfriend or a girlfriend on the side of the house in California for a week. Whether that's just putting up money for the boys and the homeboys and equipment for random stuff. They're totally cool with that. These guys don't pay for a lot of personal stuff themselves. And so the financial team of the Nets would kind of come every week or so. They'd be like, okay, we thought we had this under control. We've got to redo the budget every week. And apparently it gets worse. During the middle of COVID, they were working out half the team well, really, it was Kyrie and KD and their friends out in Kobe's old gym in California. Yeah, you weren't allowed to do that during COVID. So, yeah, this guy, Matt Sullivan, he's an author of this book. And he was doing this interview with Labattard, and he really just exposed KD in the Nets. Steve's telling me that, you know, he tried to get KD to stop looking at his phone all the time, to stop, you know, 
beefing with Draymond and then beefing with kids on Twitter. This is all really to show you guys that the Nets, uh, the power dynamic between the player, KD and Kyrie, and the GM and the coach, I mean, it's all towards Kyrie and KD. They have the most power in this organization. Obviously, the owner is on one side, but you also have those two players being the key decision makers. The Nets lost Jeff Green to the Nuggets, but they brought back Blake Griffin. They brought back Bruce Brown. We talked in the last segment. They added Patty Mills, James Johnson to the roster. Nick Claxton, he, he literally looked like Jared Allen reincarnated. He was just doing all the things that he was doing. And so on paper, it, it makes sense for you to think the Nets were going to make it out of the East. At the very least, I mean, this team looked very stacked. Last season's performance indicated to you that, you know, this team could have made it to the finals and perhaps even won it all, but they still needed reinforcements. According to The Athletic, free agent Paul Millsap has decided on the Brooklyn Nets as his destination for next season. LaMarcus Aldridge has been cleared to return to NBA action after being forced into early retirement in the spring due to some heart complications. Oh, that's fantastic news. Now, as a Nets fan, as the media will tell you all the time, you just have to cross your fingers. If these three stars are healthy, man, like, that to <laughs> me is the question. Are, are they going to be healthy? Are they going to win a title? Well, if they stay healthy, they will. I think if everybody on every team had been healthy, I think the Nets were still the best team. Everybody's, you know, hoping that this is going to be a game uh, that, that you're going to see both teams at full strength. Okay, I'm starting to get ahead of myself now. The Lakers and Nets, yeah, they're set to play on Christmas Day. And uh, the ESPN really making a big deal out of the Nets and Lakers matchup. On ESPN and ABC at 8 Eastern, it's the Lakers and the Nets. Katie, James Harden, Kyrie Irving, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Russell Westbrook. Yeesh! Yeesh is right, man. That's a lineup of two Titans facing each other. I mean, these guys are the favorites to win it all, right? With all due respect to the Bucks, we all know that if they were healthy, they'd be champions right now. And with all due respect to the Milwaukee Bucks, I'm saying that, all right? I don't think anyone honestly believes the Milwaukee Bucks get past the Nets last year if the Nets were fully healthy and then lose Kyrie Irving, okay? With these guys doing their best Mark Jackson impression, it seems like KD also agreed. He chose to re-sign with the Nets, and that was big news. Very good news. Remember, he got the coach that he wanted. The rock, they, he wanted them to go out and get James Harden. That's what the Brooklyn Nets did. They went out and got Patty Mills. They've done everything that Kevin Durant has wanted them to do. And so now on the heels of an Olympic performance that was legendary, Kevin Durant being one of the best Olympians winning gold once again. I mean, this Nets team is going to be dangerous. Did Kevin Durant prove he's the best player on the planet? No. Since when did we start using Olympic play to determine who the best player in the right world now. was? Oh, man. Guys like Skip annoy me, man. KD's lucky he didn't have to play Giannis in the Olympics. Net star Kyrie Irving did not attend the team's media day in Brooklyn, raising questions about his vaccination status. Wait, what? So you mean to tell me Kyrie is not vaccinated and we're in the midst of a pandemic? Isn't he committed to winning a championship with this franchise? If the Brooklyn Nets want to win the chip this season, and next season, and the season after that, I would have strongly considered trading Kyrie Irving for Ben Simmons. You heard me! Oh my goodness. Yeah, so Kyrie Irving is apparently not going to get his vaccine. He's not going to try. And Ben Simmons, well, he's an in return. He still doesn't want to be with Philly. He doesn't want to practice. And Shaq even agrees with Stephen A. He wants Kyrie to get traded too. Kyrie's talent is so rare that you just have to hold your nose and, and go through with it. And once again, we get a glimpse as to how the Nets operate, how they allow players like Kyrie to just have so much influence. But why is him being unvaccinated going to affect them? Any player who elects not to comply with local vaccination mandates will not be paid for games that he misses. And the law in New York is if you want to play an arena, if you want to visit an arena, you want to participate in an activity in an arena, you need to be vaccinated. So when Kyrie Irving sits back, clearly thinking about himself and his quote unquote principled positions, He's compromising the franchise. I get that some people are vaccine hesitant, but uh, Kyrie, you have a championship to win. This is bigger than you.
We have some breaking news. The Nets have announced that Kyrie Irving will not play or practice with the team until he can become a full participant. Well, that's a good start. The Nets actually trying to hold Kyrie accountable for his decisions. Uh, let's hope that that becomes a trend in the future. Now, Ben Simmons and Kyrie Irving uh, both not playing in their opening matchups for different reasons. And apparently Kyrie caused this protest to really unravel. He didn't really outright spoke to those people, but, you know, he made it so that those people really felt like he had a voice and he spoke for them. In my opinion, if Sean Marks had it his way without really having to consult with Kevin Durant, I think that he possibly would move Kyrie Irving. And I'm hearing, as of last night, at 11.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I was on the phone with some people, Jay, and I was told, yo, Kevin Durant, don't think for one second that Kevin Durant won't eventually give Brooklyn the okay to move uh -huh. this brother if it continues to be on the path that it is. This whole situation really just illustrates how much influence and power Kyrie and KD have. I mean, Kyrie, you literally just invited all this noise up. If you could sit down with Kyrie Irving, what would you tell him? I'd tell him to get vaccinated. Honestly, that's what he should have done from the get-go, but look, Kyrie's his own man. He can do whatever he wants. And uh, James Harden, well, it doesn't seem like this phases him at this point. He thinks at full strength this team is unstoppable. And why wouldn't he think this? James said that means last year was scary hours. This year is scarier hours. Rocking with whatever motto, James. You got more great news. James Harden, after opting not to sign with the Nets, made sure to say, look, I'm not planning on leaving. I'm just getting focused on my health, getting my body right, and then preparing for a great season. It appears the days of players contorting their bodies to draw fouls may finally be taking a hit, if you will. Wait, wait, what's this? So now Trae Young and James Harden aren't able to contort their bodies to try to draw fouls in very unnatural ways? This sounds like it may actually hurt the net, seeing that Harden, he specializes in this very much so. And KD, well, you know, he's still going to play his way, but Harden, I mean, this is the sign that things may not end up going so well. James Harden looked unhappy. He looked disinterested. He has been the slowest player in the NBA. Whoa, I had no idea this stat was tracked until now. And apparently, from what I can see, a lot of these guys are guys that handle the ball the half court. They don't really move much when they have the ball. So it makes sense. What is happening with James Harden? Let's just show you the numbers for the season. It's not that, oh, he's no longer an MVP candidate through five games. He's been one of the worst players in the league. We're very early into the season, so I don't know how much we can really look at these stats, but it, it is very stark seeing that Harden didn't really play this bad since his heydays in OKC when he was still in his third, fourth year. I mean, Harden's fouls. I mean, he's not able to draw the fouls like he used to, wrapping his hands around people's arms. Kevin Durant made the wrong decision by going to the New York Knicks. He's going to rule the day that he did that. Yeah, the Nets, I mean, they have a decent record. They're one of the top teams in the East, but they still aren't able to compete with the likes of the Warriors, who are just having a fantastic season. Very, very dominant performance from Stephen Curry. He hit it from everywhere at Barclays yesterday. It was quite a performance. I know he's, he's, he's the greatest shooter of all time, but can, I, can we go another level with this? He, he warrants more attention than any player in NBA history. At this point, Curry was playing at an MVP level. He was number one in every MVP tracker there was. James Harden, well, without Kyrie Irving being able to play, he's been the one that was relied on to try to uplift his team with Kevin Durant having to carry much of the load. But Harden just is not the same effective player. And, you know, you really have to wonder. If I'm James Harden, if I'm Kevin Durant, I'm on the phone with him last night. Like, I know you watched the game. <laughs> we need you, dawg. We need you. Towards the second half, this game started to become a blowout, and the Warriors were really just dominating the Nets. It was becoming so obvious that the Nets were a lower seed at this point, that the Warriors were getting MVP chance. Steph Curry bust their living, you know what? The crowd was chanting MVP. He was having a blast at, at, St at Kevin Durant's expense. And that's the dude that Kevin Durant could have stayed with because the Warriors certainly wasn't going to let him go. And he left that 
for this. KD, you made the wrong decision, bro. And here's why. Because you trusted Kyrie. Kyrie Irving betrayed you. Now, Kyrie Irving is the reason why this team isn't as good. They were supposed to be a super team with Kyrie Irving. Without him, the Nets still remain the favorites to win the NBA title this season at Caesars Sportsbook. Can the Nets still win the title this season? Hell no. Not without Kyrie Irving. Hell no. Were the Nets supposed to be a good team without one of their key players? I mean, this is why they built a super team with three elite players, right? They're 11-0 against teams 500 or worse, but they're 2-5 and five against uh, teams above 500. I was wrong. Let's be clear on what it was. And you said I don't that even with I don't Kyrie. believe in the Nets anymore. It's just, I'm so sad, it's hard to put in the words. What's even sadder is the Nets are actually playing good basketball relatively to their peers. I mean, they're a high seed in the East, but, but it, it still didn't matter. James Harden, it seemed like he was already done with the Nets. You are a superstar, and you are not looking like one. It is that simple. You got to get it together. James Harden a lot of times looks disinterested, almost like he's looking at Philly. Kevin Durant. But I, I, like, what's up with your guy Kyrie? Things would get way worse as now Kevin Durant, their key anchor in the team, would get hurt and be out for weeks. And when you look at the replay, you could really see how the impact, you know, hyperextended KD's knee. I mean, yeah, that's a tough one. And after beating the New Orleans Pelicans, I mean, they did fairly well, but then it got worse, man. They ended up losing uh, 12 straight games, and Harden just had enough. Meadow is very weak at, and you have an opportunity to get some second chance looks. He clearly did not sign up to play basketball without Kyrie and Kevin Durant being there. It was really straining him, and he just did not want to be part of this franchise anymore. His behavior on their West Coast trip last week and into this week is definitely an informal trade request. And so the trade that I didn't think was gonna happen did happen and Harden now ends up being a Sixer and Ben Simmons is now a Brooklyn Net. And I remember the story at this point being about the Sixers Nets matchup that was coming up. I apologize if I'm getting ahead of ourselves too much, but you guys do have a game in Philly in a couple of weeks. Do you think you can be ready for that? You know, physically, mentally, you know, I imagine it's a pretty... I hope so. All hope is lost. Ben Simmons did not end up playing that game. I mean, he did do some shoot-arounds, and Harden did play at least. And, yeah, he was just sitting there and looking very dazed. Yeah, it, it was a wash. Okay, the whole season, the Brooklyn Nets were coming back, and they made the play-in and beat the Cavaliers. Now they're a seventh seed. AD Kyrie, are they the most skilled pair of teammates that we've ever seen? Without a doubt. Without a shadow of a doubt. Man, we keep hearing about how skilled these two are and how great they are at scoring the ball. I wonder how they're gonna do and fare in the first round against the Boston Celtics. 111, 108. Jalen Brown's got 22. Here's Durant for three. No! The Boston Celtics did the impossible and were now at the present moment where now we see the Nets uh, having to go home, being swept by the former assistant coach, Ime Udoka. I mean, yeah, Ben Simmons, did he play at all? Nope. He was just out there sitting down, trying to look his best for the cameras. It was really sad to watch. So you guys always talk about that championship stuff. I try to tell y'all, all these bus riders, they don't mean nothing to me. And just like early in the video, KD responds in the most childish ways, you know, not really saying anything at all. And, uh, you know, TNT guys, they had fun with it. When Russia bombed Ukraine, I thought Kyrie Irving wasn't going to show up to work. I really wanted to take time to talk about this because this was, oh my God, this is such nonsense. Kyrie Irving tweeting after getting swept by the Boston Celtics. And clearly, he's just not wanting to take accountability. He's just going to point fingers at other people for talking bad about him. I mean, what do you want people to say when you're doing all these stupid things all the time? Okay, I just want to read this part here. Just watch all the people who wake up every day and report about people's lives on TV and social media and then profit off of them. And then they justify their jobs by saying they got paid to say how they feel. Lol, it's like these people live in a fantasy. I literally sat there like this. Is this man going to skip work? 
Kyrie Irving, it's fine to have opinions. It's fine to have, you know, different beliefs. But to play the victim because you don't want to take accountability is just so gross. We are witnessing one of the most delusional athletes in American history. He's, he's lost. Some of you are thinking, why don't I do a longer video talking about Kyrie Irving and his antics? And really, it's because it's not worth doing. Like, this guy's going to keep doing his thing. And he's going to keep playing the victim until he has to take accountability at some point, right? The Nets are not going to do it. But at some point, he's going to have to really face the consequences of his actions. And I think the same thing goes with KD. But I, you know, touch on KD more in this video. You guys can go check it out. And for all my Muslim brothers and sisters, Eid Mubarak, it's a very great day. Holy day. And, you know, have a great, great day.